And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Act three, Bonnie! Act three! Act three! Yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film Podcast to drunkenly stumble our way into the third and final act of the show. And it is said third act wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our hand-picked, hand-crafted, and hand some third thing. Movie of the week! And this, and today, we get ever closer to finally finish our summer of bottoming with a look at the number two worst movie of all time, according to the Internet Movie Database, the 2004 Scott Bayo John Voight kids movie, also known as Super Babies, Baby Geniuses 2. Yes. My body rejected this film like a bad kidney. <laughs> I'm just going to come out and say it. This movie gave me eye cancer. We did have to get really high first. Because we knew oh, we were going into a danger zone. Okay. Oh, but like for the first, Jesus. I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, I was like, well, okay, it's stupid, but it's made for kids. I don't know. I, I, I think maybe a kid would be entertained by this. Uh, that changed over the course of the movie. You know? Yeah. Where yeah. It, it was just a lot of violence. Getting worse and worse. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Real bad. Real, real bad. Uh, but before we get, we really get into it, I have a big-time earth-shattering exclusive for you, buddy. Okay. Uh, you see, this film stars John Voight and Scott Bayo. God damn! What uh -huh. a parade of stars <laughs> this movie has. How'd you land that casting coup? Yeah. Wow! So they, they had I have signs. a signs. They were holding up signs on the corner of Beverly Avenue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I have obtained through rather scrupulous means an actual audio recording of Scott Bayo and John Voight's first meeting together. Okay. Apparently they were recording the first time that the cast met each other, and I happened to get a recording of that first meeting. So, would you like to hear it, Bunny? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, it's it. I'm just gonna be playing it over here. Okay. 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 All right. All right. So uh, let me press play off screen here. Oh, I'm so happy that we're finally meeting. You and I, Scott Bayo and John Voigt. So happy that we're finally working together. Man, people have been clamoring for a John Voigt and Scott Bayo film. Uh, I can already tell that you're a great person to work with and we really hit it off. You know what? Let's make a promise. Let's make a promise to get together again. Not for a movie, but for something else. I've got an idea. Okay. If they ever elect a president that's a total rapist piece of shit, I'm not talking like a dumb president, like, oh, I, I'm, I'm George Bush. I don't, know, I don't know how to spell, and I'm kind of an idiot. No, I mean a total fuckball. We're talking racist, con man, rapist, a real piece of shit. We're talking walking on Air Force One with toilet paper in his shoe type of a dumbass. If that, if they ever elect a dumbass like that, let's just go all in on supporting it. Yes. I think, I think that'd be a great idea in sort of an avant-garde 
uh, Andy Kaufman sort of a thing. We'll just go all in on this piece of shit, and it, it'll be funny. Okay, now let's go make this piece of shit movie. And there you go. Wow. What an that exclusive was audio recording. fucking amazing. Where, where did you get that? Uh, I had to seduce a few people. Wow. I mean, uh, I, 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 I have to say that, that as the one who does the sound engineering on the Pope mm-hmm. on film, my expert opinion would say that that was very authentic. Yeah, 100% authentic. Yeah. Absolutely authentic. It's incredible that we were able to get this. Yeah. So, okay. Oh. Okay, so every summer here on the Pope on Film podcast, we do themed summers and we will watch a certain group of films or a certain type of films. And oh man, the edibles just kicked in. So the rest <laughs> of this is going to be really exciting. It, I just realized how high I am. Okay, so every summer we do themed summers and we've done the summer of Star Wars and the summer of Saw. And then I had a plan to watch every shitty WWE Studios movie, which means 98% of all of the movies that they ever made. But yeah. then last summer, right before we were going into the summer, Fred Willard died. So we had an entire summer where we watched uh, Fred Willard's films, and that was a whole bunch of fun. I'm so happy that at the last second, I was able to get his first film, that like oh, Teenage Bride movie. Teenage so mother? happy to have finally track that down. Yeah. Yeah. That was a fun one. But it was a really fun I, I still summer. still have it. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, nice. I, so, I keep most of the movies. Yeah, not me. I was so happy to delete Super Babies. You have no <laughs> idea. I was like, I've seen you. Uh, now I will. Now it's time for us to say goodbye. <laughs> I was pretty happy to get rid of it. So, so... My idea was, last summer was so much fun looking through the movies of Fred Willard that this summer we had to pay for how fun last summer was. So we're going to do something really bad. So we've been watching movies, select movies, a lot of movies that uh, the fans on Twitter have voted on, which was a lot of fun. Yes. But uh, we've been watching movies from IMDb's Bottom 100, and we are now in the end game because this week's movie, Super Babies, Baby Geniuses 2, is the number two worst <coughs> movie on the list. Uh, a movie that Variety called Look Who's Talking meets Plan 9 from Outer Space. And I am sick and tired of people yes. comparing bad movies to Plan 9 from Outer Space. Fuck you. Yeah. You know how many movies Ed Wood has on the IMDb Bottom 100? Zero. You know how many films Yui Bowl has on the list? I think there's three. Yeah. But, oh, we're going to mention Plan 9 from Outer Space because it's easy. But no, no, it's time to move on from comparing every bad movie to Plan 9 from Outer Space. Yeah. Fuck off. Piss me off. Might be four movies on the list, but no. Especially no, when off. the room exists. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, I hate having to throw Tommy Weasel under the bus like that, but please. Yeah. So, uh, okay. In 1999, a movie came out called Baby Geniuses. It starred Kathleen Turner and Christopher Lloyd. Really? Which, okay, that's not the world's best cast because I still have nightmares of the Oogie Loves and the Big Balloon Adventure, which featured Christopher Lloyd. Yes. But that cast is As infinite. do we all. Yeah, right. but I'd rather take mm-hmm. Kathleen Turner and Christopher Lloyd over John Voight and Scott Bayo. Yes. Fuck. And also, that film also had Dom DeLuise, Kim Cattrall, Peter McNichol. See, the thing about Scott Baio is, is that we never knew is that when he was in Charles in Charge, 
of our days he meant it nights. he he meant it and now and now yeah. he wants to he wants to have carve out a nice small part of the Reich for himself I'm going to work on a list of TV shows that match with other TV show TV show titles that go with other TV show titles. Okay. Like, like just the ten of us? Eight is enough. <laughs> True. I, because I was just I was just thinking about. Uh, oh shit! Uh, uh, who's the boss? Well, yeah. Charles in charge. Yeah. Everybody knows that. That's who the boss is. It just makes sense. So, okay. So, the first film came out in 1999. It cost $12 million to make, and it, it made almost $37 million at the box office. It was the 10th highest grossing PG movie to come out in 1999, and it was also the first film to use CGI to make it seem like someone was talking. Yes. No movie had ever used CGI to make lips move before 1999's Baby Geniuses, and apparently all of this was enough to make a sequel. The problem was, the first film, it was a success, but also critics hated it. Hell, fucking audiences hated it. And so when it was time to make a sequel, nobody wanted to be in this piece of shit. At all. Well, well... You know, I mean, if you're talking about the first one now, I haven't seen it, but, like, okay, it's talking babies, and yes, Look Who's Talking was kind of amusing. Uh, and it is Christopher Lloyd and Kathleen Turner. Yeah. Uh, I would consider giving it a pop. So, so like, like, I can kind of understand its box office. You know, yeah. but if you have that that if everybody's hating it, why why are you making a sequel? And then, who in two thousand and four is thinking Hollywood star Scott Bayo? Yeah. In two thousand and four, this yeah. movie wasn't made in nineteen ninety three, and like, oh, let's put Scott Bayo in it. No, this is two thousand and fucking four. This is ridiculous. So it's so that's why the first film. Yeah, but had this actual... was this was at the time where you know he, he would show up at your house personally for two thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. It, but but like two thousand and four, we're talking. Uh, the Passion of the Christ, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, uh, Charlize Theron with no makeup in uh, Monster, uh, Ray, the Ray Charles movie. Yeah. Fucking, uh, like, all of these movies. The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou, for shit's sake, and someone says, yeah, we should get Scott Bayo to star in this movie. <laughs> At that same time is ridiculous. So th so that's why the first film had names, and the second film has Chachi as a businessman, and uh, John Voight literally doing a um, Joseph Mengele impression. Yeah. In, in, in an interview, he did say, John Voight specifically said that he based his uh, work in the film on Joseph Mengele. There's also the character of Kylie, the, the blonde brainiac and honor roll student, that's played by actress Skylar Shea. You might remember this person because she also co starred in 2007's Bratz movie. Really? So I want, yeah, she was the blonde one in the Bratz movie, and now she's the blonde one in Super Baby Super Geniuses, too. So, so kudos to her for being in two of the worst movies of all time. If only she was in Cats. 
But that started <laughs> me to thinking. We watched Bratz this summer for the for our summer of bottoming. Yes. Uh, it was number 57 on the list of the 100 worst movies of all time. But who else was in the Bratz movie with Skylar Shay, Bunny? The principal in Bratz was played oh, by oh, John Voight. It was Bratz. We were... Jeannie yeah. and I would think, I'm like, what the hell was it that we saw John Voight in recently where he had the fake fucking nose? Yeah, that was, that was Brat. John Voight was in that. But, that. but then that got me thinking, wait a second, John Voight and this random actor, Skylar Shea, were in the Bratz movie? And now you mean to tell me that John Voight and this same blonde woman... We're also in Super Babies, Baby Geniuses too. At this point, I'm thinking there's got to be something up. There has yeah. to be something up. So I do some investigating, and apparently, Super Babies, Baby Geniuses too, and all of the other Baby Geniuses movies, which we will get to, were all done by John Voight's uh, production company. Okay. Who also had a hand in making the Bratz film. And what did John Voight do? He put his goddaughter in the movies. Oh. Tyler Shea is related to John Voight. That's how she got in Bratz and how she got in Super Babies, Baby Geniuses too. What? I've uncovered the truth. Yes, you have. This is a big deal. She is only in these movies because she is related to a famous person. You're 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 Q and a half. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Really proud of that. Now, uh, here's, here's the difficult thing. I try to find the good in everything. It, even in a bad movie we watch, I try and find some positives. I mean, Birdemic had a part. That was all just made by one dude, and he's trying his best. And like, oh, the film has an Ed Woodian, uh, like, sort of a thing. Yeah. Huh? I, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but Bunny, how did you like Redemic? I kind of had my own uh, cat-related emergency going on last week, so I didn't get to find out how you liked it. Yeah, you weren't here for the end of that episode. Yeah. So how did you like Redemic? Did I lose you? Oh, how did I like Redemic? Yes. Yeah, how did yes. you like yeah, it? Yeah, oh. I was, I was not here to find out how you liked it. Like, eh... You know, like they, like they. Add, Your silence. It's. It's it's all just so amateurish. <laughs> is basically how it is. Like like, they've almost got the steps down right, but they don't know how to actually do the steps. Yeah, you know, I that's kind yeah. of where it is. Like. Like, the first act turn came pretty much where you would expect it to. You know? Yeah. Things like, things like that. But, All right. now, bad. The dialogue back. was bad. The script was bad. The acting was bad. The effects were bad. I know, wasn't it wonderful? Everything mm -hmm. was bad and amateurish. Mm -hmm. Of course. Which made it great. Like Just hanging out. Song. Hanging out. I don't know if I'm necessarily Hanging saying out. I don't Hitting like it. Hanging out. a party. Just I, I, I had been curious <laughs> to, to like see the kind of growth as filmmakers for this dude. Uh, but as Mr. Steve brought up last week, turns out not good. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> Not good. All right. Well, let's back to Super Baby. Super <clears throat> Baby Jesus. Yeah, so Birdemic had hard and alone in the dark. If you squinted, it kind of looked like a first season episode of X-Files or Supernatural. And at least, at least Battlefield Earth scammed the Church of Scientology for a few million dollars. Yes. But the only positive I can think about in relation to this movie is... At least a few midget stuntmen got jobs that month. Yes. At least it's only an hour and a half. 
But I wasn't least, really buying that any of these babies were geniuses. Just because babies can talk doesn't mean they're geniuses, I think no. is what you're trying to say. And I mean, that is very the, true. You're setting the bar kind of low there, if that's what you're considering. Yeah. Uh, at least it's only an hour and a half. That's another positive. That is another positive. There's nothing good about this movie. At least Scott Bayo got punched in the face, but that's only three seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's an entire movie. Unless it's an entire movie of Scott Bayo getting his face punched in, that would be <coughs> yes. great. But there's nothing good about this film. John Voight is a literal Nazi doing experiments on children. Man, that movie is awesome. I really want to do it now. Just two hours. Like the predecessor oh, of the movie Ass. But just a, just basically Scott Baio's face and just... Punch, 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 punch. For two hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It would be hypnotic so, and spellbinding. Scott Baio's character in this film it it seemed familiar and I was trying to like put my finger on it and then it hit me um he acts in this film he carries himself in this film exactly like Jonah from the TV show Superstore okay great show on NBC but that's basically Scott Bayo's character he's a little bit I don't know nebbish I guess yeah. you could say. But yeah, he was basically doing a Jonah from Superstore. I, I... Vanessa Angel is also in this. She was a sex pot eye candy actress that popped up a lot in the 90s. She was... They did a, they did a TV show based on the movie Weird Science. And they, yeah. couldn't get, they couldn't get the woman from the movie. So they got Vanessa Angel half naked in it, and it lasted for more seasons than it should solely on the fact that Vanessa Angel was very attractive in the 90s. She was also the romantic interest, interest in the lowbrow bowling comedy Kingpin, which I never liked. I, I've never actually seen that. It's a Fairly Brothers movie at the peak of the Fairly Brothers, so like, oh... Here's a 10-minute shit sequence. Oh, no. So somebody has a boner. Oh, but they've got to meet their grandmother. Like, like that sort of shit. Yeah. You know? So... 13-year-old boy shit. Yeah. So, like, it, it really looked... Lo it, so she was very big in the 90s, and she popped up all over the place, but I imagine... Her career is definitely faltering if she went from acting in uh, uh, Kingpin with Woody Harrelson and Bill Murray to being Scott Baio's wife in 2004. Yeah. That's not a star on the rise, is what I'm saying. No. Also, how excited were you, Bunny, to see the cameo 37 minutes in? by popular boy band O-Town. Is that was, who they were? Was, were they actually someone? Yeah, they were legendary boy band O-Town, formed in the year 2000 on a reality show called Making the Band. I know you're a big O-Town <coughs> fan. You don't have to hide that from me. It's all right. Yeah. I know you're excited to first go, what, Whoopi Goldberg? How did they get her other than waving a check? And then, what? Whoopi Goldberg and O-Town? Whoa. Yeah. Okay. So, um, fun Whoopi, fact. Whoopi Goldberg was a surprise, but not really, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And then, and then, and then in the movie, they called her Whoops. Yes. She's whoops. Oh, how cute is that? that and has that she ever is... done a, uh, another movie in the franchise? No, no, but we'll be, 
Uh, no, yeah. but we will be getting to the franchise in a little bit. Okay, so, so here's a fun... So we may assume that she did not appreciate being called whoops. Probably not, yeah. yeah. Probably not. But, wow, it's really shocking to see Whoopi Goldberg in this movie. Usually she does good movies, like that one where she was a cop with a T-Rex. Yes. She makes such good career choices. What is she doing in a bad film? Yeah. So, uh, fun fact. When a bad movie comes along and reviewers start tearing into this bad movie, there's usually one or two movie reviewers who will go against the current and be like, okay, sure, the room is bad, but uh, it is really fun to watch in a bad sort of way. When you see it as a comedy... This is a wonderful film. Usually, most films, even if it's a horrible piece of shit, will have a few good reviews. Yeah. Uh, as a result, there have only been 44 movies that have gotten 0% ratings on Rotten Tomatoes. In, in all of the films that have been reviewed on Rotten Tomatoes, only 44 films have gotten a 0%, meaning that no one wrote a single favorable review. Yeah. Now, I have a small sample of some of the movies that got zero positive reviews. And uh, I think most of them you will recognize, and I think you'll agree. So uh, let's just go down the list. Staying Alive, the John Travolta film. Okay. Not a single good review. Bo Derek's Bolero. Oh my god. Not a single yeah. good review. Is that where the theme to Bolero is from? What? In that song. That, no, that's, that song that, is, that is called old. Bolero. No, Bolero's for, uh, I think it's part of Carmen. Oh, that's what I thought. Okay, because, cause like, okay. Because I was like, that'd be weird if one of the worst <laughs> films of all time had a very iconic... But if we want to go there, it's, it's from oh, Carmen, God. but it became know. popularized in the movie 10 with Dudley Moore and Bo Derek. There you go. And she became okay, so thank attached you. to the song... That they gave her a movie named Bolero. Yeah. There you go. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that got zero positive reviews. Uh, Jaws the Revenge, which I have issues with. We have been over that. Yes. I have issues. That is something I have learned this summer. Uh, what else? Highlander 2, The Quickening. Okay. Wagons East, which was John Candy's last film, I thought the premise of that film was cute. That you have to think. I can kind of, I can kind of deal with Highlander: The Quickening. Yeah. Okay. If you, but I always like if you just roll with it. Yeah. Yeah. But I always, I always like the premise of Wagon East. Like you had to think that so many, so many people were headed west to to find gold and to to be successful. You got to think there were some people who were like, "This is fucking horrible. Can we go back?" Yeah. Like I like that concept. I think that's a good concept. Uh, Simon Says, spelled S-E-Z, starring Dennis Rodman. There's a reason why Dennis Rodman is not known as an action superstar. Yeah. And that reason is the movie Simon Says. Ballistics X vs. Sever, which used to be on the IMDb Bottom 100, but is not anymore. Adam Sandler's The Ridiculous Six, which I have not seen. Yes. Amber, have you seen The Ridiculous Six? No? Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, the 2016... I, I heard watching The Ridiculous Six could put you in the hospital. Yeah, that's not surprising. That is not surprising. Uh, what else? The 2016 remake of Cabin Fever. John Travolta's 2018 film, Gotti, 
And it should come as no surprise, Super Babies, Baby Geniuses 2. <laughs> but here's the thing. This movie is so bad. It's not just a bad movie. It is a notoriously bad movie. And for a very long time, this movie had the number one spot as the absolute worst movie of all time. Yeah. So um, it's so notoriously bad that I think that when it was released on DVD, it was a bit of a success. I think it was such a bomb that it caused morbid curiosity. And so I believe that even though it bombed at the box office, that this made a decent chunk of change when it was released to DVD because they made three more movies. Oh, man. There's Baby Geniuses in 1999. There's Super Babies, Baby Geniuses 2 in 2004. Then they wait almost a decade and... In 2013, they come out with Baby Geniuses and the Mystery of the Crown Jewels, direct-to-video, the next year. Baby Geniuses and the Treasures of Egypt, the next year. Baby Geniuses and the Space Baby. Oh, no. And surprise, surprise, all of them <coughs> feature John Voight and Skylar Shay. Oh. But not Whoopi Goldberg. No. She, no doubt, upset that they called her whoops. Don't anyone call her whoops. <coughs> then she gets PTSD. <coughs> PTSD. Post traumatic stress babies. They also filmed a one season live action TV series called, and I hate this, Baby Geniuses BSI. Baby Scene Investigator. Okay. It's like CSI, but it's with babies. You get it? It's hilarious. It aired so, in foreign markets like Australia and Italy, but it never aired in the United States. Yay! Yay! Yeah. But there's a television series out there somewhere, so that's fucking weird. So who but is yeah, the movie, target market here? I guess foreigners? I guess foreigners who don't understand America? I guess yeah. that's what this is the target for now. But yeah, they made five Baby Geniuses movies, and that's astounding to me. Especially since this movie bombed so hard. The first film in 1999 cost $12 million to make, so, so and it made a decent chunk of change. So they upped the budget for the second one. The second one cost $20 million to make, and it premiered at the box office in 11th place. Oh. It made $9 million at the box office, and to be clear, that was worldwide. Oh. So it was a spectacular bomb. This movie sucks, and there is nothing good about it. It hurt my soul, this movie. The, there's one so, part where I, I got I, excited. I, I'm, I'm picturing... Okay, bear with me here a second. Okay. I'm picturing basically a Turkish prison. Is Recep Eva deep there? At least... He may be one of the guards. One of the guards, yeah. And like his two friend guards was a guard are dragging died. somebody, kicking and screaming... Yeah. And they're dragging him to see a baby genius movie. That's no! Good. No! Not that! Not that! Anything but that! Please! Show me Recep Eva D12. <laughs> so, uh, the ending is really painful to watch when all the babies get powers and there's ridiculous fights. But I got excited. Because one of the baby's powers is, is that she's like Cupid, and she has arrows that make people fall in love, and she hits two guys in the butt. And yeah. I got excited, and I was like, oh my god, are they going to kiss? Are you going to have like a gay kiss in the middle of his super babies, baby geniuses too? But instead, they turn, around, they turn to each other kind of high and go, I love you, man. I love you too. And they faint. And uh, maybe it's just me. I was kind of hoping they'd fuck. 
<laughs> I was kind of hoping that they, they'd like they turn, did, they just and the so next I... thing you know, they start making out, and then boom, onto the fisting. <laughs> but instead, they played it safe, and they just said, I love you, man, and fainted. I just thought, uh, a real opportunity to sort of change, shift the paradigm. Yes. You know? But no, oh, I love you, man. I'm going to faint. Okay. It, they really could have just been like, you're hot as fuck. And then the other guy starts saying that romantic monologue from, uh, from what's, that, what's that movie that you really, really like from uh, Netflix? The Old Guard, yeah. Oh. Suddenly, suddenly both of the guys turn and it's like, you are my moon. You are my sun. I don't remember the monologue, but that, that was my... That was my attempt. <laughs> it's it, it, here's all you need to know about Super Babies, Baby Geniuses Two. The credits are in Comic Sans. Yes. Comic Sans. Uh huh. That's all you need to know, right there. That's all you need to know. Period. Uh, so that's all I got. Do you have anything else? This movie is shit. This movie is shit, yeah. I, mm, movie is, there's yeah. N- no redeeming qualities about this at all. No. Uh. No. What, what? Oh, God. Well, let me brace myself. Fuck! <sighs> shit, uh. We're at the end of the movie. Where that means okay. that there's one episode left, um, and I'm scared. I am scared. What is it? I am scared for next week. Okay. Here, hold my hand. Okay. okay. Hold my hand. Fuck. Okay. Um, we can do this. This is all the fault of the scary movie franchise. Okay. Okay. So in the year 2000, they decide to make a parody of Scream and other teen horror movies, and it's called Scary Movie, and it's, it, it, the first film is pretty funny, and uh, the second film was less funny, the third film was less funny than that, eventually you're getting to like Scary Movie fucking eight, I don't know, and they're all like shit. Yeah. But it, it was the idea at the beginning of the millennia that hey, parody movies are doing pretty good, let's rush out a few. So two of the people who wrote Scary Movie started doing parodies throughout the year 2000. In 2006, yeah. they made Date Movie, and it was a parody of romantic comedies. Then after that, they released Epic Movie. With, oh, what? Borat? And Borat is hanging out with Captain Jack Sparrow? But who's that? It's Ted, the foul mouth bear. And what? Crispin Glover is as... Johnny Depp's Willy Wonka? And oh no, here comes Nacho Libre. This is fucking hilarious. And then uh, they also did a movie called Meet the Spartans, which was a parody of the movie 300. They also yeah. did The Starving Games. Get it? Yeah. Uh, they also did a movie called Vampires Suck, which is like, oh, teen vampire movies. Oh, fucking whatever. In 2008, they made a film called Disaster Movie, and it is the absolute worst. I am really scared, but we got to get through it. It's the worst movie of all time. I believe in us. We're basically talking Kmart Zucker Brothers. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. These, my, I, I've seen a few of them. Uh, they're, they're, they're airplane, but bad. Yeah, yeah. They're low budget. The movies seem to me like the sort of movies that would only, that they would never be released in theaters, and it wouldn't even be released in stores. You just see a commercial at 1 a.m. for the not-so-teen comedy film not available in stores, only available right now. So call this 1-800 number. It features Lou Ferrigno taking a shit. 
you know, like one of those movies that you would see a commercial for at 1 a.m. at like 2002, and it stars the Sham Wow guy. Yeah. Yeah. Except these ones got into theaters. It's all the things that I hate about uh, Kingpin and Dumb and Dumber, but turned up to 11. This <laughs> film goes to 11. And I'm not looking forward to this. Fun fact about these movies, these, these aren't even parodies of the movies. In order to keep up with movies that were being released, they would write these movies based on the trailers. Yeah. So they have a Juno character in this movie before Juno even came out. <laughs> this is a character of Juno based on a preview because they don't want to be out of date by the time the movie eventually comes out in theaters. So these are the worst characterizations of movies that they didn't even see. And okay. Kim Kardashian is in this. Oh, no. So this is going to be painful next week. I'm well, just well that's, right now. That's, that's it. I think that's it. That's I've got to make that another rule of mine. You know, much like if there's a monkey in a movie, it gets an automatic two points. If there's a yeah. Kardashian... Or Paris Hilton. I gotta deduct two points. Yeah. Negative negative twenty Pope on film tokens. Yes. We're doing Pope on film tokens now. I totally didn't steal this from a YouTuber. <laughs> so uh Birdemic gets gets twenty Pope on film tokens for trying. Uh this week's film, Super Babies, Baby Geniuses 2, gets one Pope on Film token for having Scott Bayo get punched in the face. But already, next week's film, a uh, disaster movie, gets like negative 10 Pope on Film tokens, and we haven't even watched it yet. <laughs> so who knows where, where they're going to be. But that's next week. It's already available on our shared cough cough. This is going to be difficult, and I apologize. But I swear, for a while after this, for September, before it turns over to you for your birthday month, I'm going to try and make it some upbeat shit. Okay. Good. To make up for this horrible summer. Some fun movies that we'll actually enjoy. So, I I'm planning uh, some interesting movies. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. I gotta hand it to you, Bunny. It's so much better because of you that I can now say, oh, The Green Mile, beautiful film, reminds me in many ways of The Holy Mountain. <laughs> you know, Jordorowski's epic film. Yes. So lush and beautifully filmed. And it's so, so, like, that makes me seem a lot more of a movie buff than I actually am on Twitter, so thank you for that. Well, uh, and, and Uptown Saturday Night. Yeah, yeah, Uptown Saturday yeah. Night. Uh, yeah, uh, I try to go different places, places where we do not normally go, and try to highlight something or some things in cinema that maybe are getting a little overlooked. I was watching either some movie or some TV show, and it was set in like the 70s or the 80s, and there was a TV on in the background. And anytime I'm watching anything and there's a TV on in the background, I automatically go, ooh, what are they watching? What are they watching? What are they watching? What are yeah. they watching? Did they create something original, or is that is that is that this old movie? And I was watching something, and I don't remember what it was watching, but I was so excited to go, fuck, they're watching Cotton Comes to Harlem! Yeah! God damn, I love that movie! Cotton Comes to Harlem! I was really, I was really proud of myself for being able to point that out. So. Yeah. Always look forward to October's Good Sir. 
Thank you. But before we get there, fuck, we've got to watch the worst movie of all time. Yes, we do. <sighs> so that's next week, the shocking conclusion to our summer long. But then we will be heroes. Let's keep this in mind. We will be heroes. We will be. We will be heroes for having gotten through all of this. You're not we bad movie fans. We're bad movie fans. Badass yes. bad movie fans. We can do this. We can do this. We got this. No problems. No, nope, but some problems. This is going to hurt. But we can do this. Yeah. We got this. That's next week. So join us next week. But now that I'm looking back at this week, oh, man. The highs and the lows, the ups and the downs. I cried a little bit. Skylar Shane is uh, John Boyd's goddaughter. Uh, two Murrays. Free guy. Maxwell's not in class. And he doesn't like eating crickets. Uh, I gotta say, I think, I think that this has been a pretty good episode. This has been a damn good episode. Okay, good. I, I felt the same way, but I didn't want to step on your toes because I feel like you're the person who gives the episode a classification. <laughs> and I, I didn't want to hamper what I believe is your job on this podcast. But yes, I I concur with your statement, good sir. Thumbs up, Maxwell. That's cool. Uh, I had one like this, uh, but it wasn't an iron, an iron sweater, and we had to give it to Eleanor. Yeah, you have good. Oh. Uh, yeah. Because, uh... <laughs> so uh, until right next week... I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve, and on behalf of Natasha and Maxwell and Eleanor and Jaden and Bella and everybody else in this house, I would just like to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. Thank you, Bella. And you iron spider. And you cookie my cream. Nice. Do 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 do. This is the outro. Do 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 do. Skinny pop the doo wow. Cut and print. And what it. Cut and print.